Okay, cool. All right, so Splunk, I'm not exactly sure how to fill out part of this because this seems a little strange, this table. But you guys should know how to find slope. It's the change in y over the change in x, right? You guys should know that. Um, or you can also think of it like this, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I'll take care of this yeah. Or rise over run. Yeah, I'll risk the board. Sorry, my apologies. So there's a few ways you can think about slope. Um, we're going to kind of contextualize slope for some word problems eventually. But all it ever is is a change y over change in x, or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or rise over run. That's all it ever is, right? Oh, oh, and do you need the, the yeah. notes? You don't have notes? Oh, yeah. oh you were not here. That's right. I don't think you are. You're the other person. I know I know it's five fills missing. Yeah, there we go. Sorry. Oh, yeah. oh, there you go. Right. Yeah. yeah. I don't actually. <laughs> okay. All right. So anyway, um, don't worry about the columns that say slope graph and equation because that's kind of weird for the first row. But just think of a slope like that, right? So, for example, I'll do an example over here off to the margins. Uh, what if you have like 1, 4 and negative 2, 6? How would I find my slope? I would do 4 minus 6. You know what? That is hard to read. I'm, I'm writing on the margins. No, of course you can't see it because I didn't realize the contrast is so awful. Here, let's go bright green. That's not much better. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. So example, what if you like one comma four? Okay, I'm, I'm now I already forgot what I did earlier. Uh, negative two comma six. There you go. So you simply subtract the y's and subtract the x's, right? You get negative two over three. As you should, because if we were to graph one comma four, it would look like this, right? If I graph negative two comma six, it would look like this. If I connect these dots, you go down to right three, right? So it should be negative two thirds. So you don't have to write the example if you don't want to, because slope is a pretty easy topic. I, for, you know, I, I kind of believe so. All right, horizontal lines. Um, what slope does horizontal lines have? You guys know? Well, well it would be zero. Yeah, because graphically it looks like this, right? If here's X and Y, then graphically it just looks like this. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll get to that in a sec. Um, and equation-wise, you'd say Y equals some number. That's what you say as, as an equation. Y would equal some number. Like maybe y equals two, y equals three, y equals four. Sure, yep, yep, exactly. That's 100% what it says, yep. All right, let's move on to vertical lines. So JP, you're saying it's infinite. Um, I would say it's more like undefined, but I know what you mean by that. Because what's gonna happen if you were to graph two dots like this and draw a vertical line through them, uh, there's all this rise but no run. I mean, okay. I mean, yes, technically what happens is from a calculus standpoint, which which you'll do next year, you'll start the change in X will be so tiny that you're divided by a super tiny number, which makes the overall fraction really big. But I'm not gonna kind of get that go down that path because that's more of a calculus explanation. But we just say it's undefined because you can't divide by zero. Can't divide. And it's going to look like this. Um, again, x and y are right here. x and y. 
And you're going to say x equals some number. Easy peasy. That's all. So those are vertical lines. Like x equals 2, x equals 3, x equals 4, and so forth. Okay, let's keep on moving. Questions so far? We're good? All right, parallel and perpendicular. Um, two lines with the same slope, right? You should know this. When does a text box might be better? I don't know how you write like that with your mouse. Uh, several years of practice. Actually, um, I was really impressed with the, the guy who actually taught you guys uh, on Wednesday. Yeah, I actually should ask him how he got because that actually was pretty. And his his penmanship was really nice. Too. My penmanship sucks. So but same slope, different. Two lines of the same slope. There's not a different start. There were different start like y intersections. Oh sure, of course, right, right. But um, but two lines of the same slope. We're just we're just interested in how it is from a um slope perspective. Yeah, if they had the same y intercept, it'd be the same line, right? Again, this is x and y. And there you go. Like, these would be parallel lines, right? Kind of like parallel parking. Don't be the person that parks like a jerk and parks crooked, and then you can't pull out. <laughs> Try to make sure your car is parallel to the curb, right? <laughs> or sidewalk. Uh, if you guys have cam I didn't have these cameras when I started driving 93, 94. Um, so you just got to just, it's muscle memory, right? Just kind of just do it. Um, anyway, and then equation-wise, um, an example could be like y equals 2x plus 1 and y equals like 2x plus 3. Right? You have the same slope. As an example... So that's all for that one. And then, do you guys remember for perpendicular how the slopes are related? Do you guys remember? Opposite. Yeah, I mean, like, negative like, reciprocals, like, yeah. Two lines with negative reciprocal slopes. Or, oh, geez, let me uh, select that again, resize it. There we go. Or, two lines for which the product of their slopes is negative one. You can think of it like that, too. So, oh, geez, I don't want yellow. Come on. Here we go. Let's go a little thicker there. No, not that. Here we go. X, Y. So you got this. That's not the best looking line. And that's the right angle. That's Y. Sorry. So a good, good example could be something like this. So they just form a right angle? Yes, 100% they do. And y equals like negative one half. The wire steps are totally negligible, it could be whatever. But notice that two and negative one half are negative circles. Or if I multiply those two slopes, I get negative one, right? Two at the time, negative half is negative one, right? So, yeah. Again, it's all review of like, I mean, I think you guys saw this for the first time in algebra one, like in middle school. Saw it again in algebra two. Probably got reinforced in geometry. Yeah, question? I just couldn't see the negative. Oh, no worries. Yeah, the negative is kind of important, obviously. Does it not matter where they start? Like okay. the nope, could be anywhere. Okay. Just as long as they form right angle. Yep. All right. So that should just be overall review of that stuff. Let's move on to the next page. All right. 
So equations of lines, how we write them, right? That's important too. And then let's do some examples. Okay. So yeah, general form is kind of a weird one. Um, I'm not a big fan of it, but um, actually, I'm going to switch this up. Guys, cross off general and call the standard. General form is when you move C to the left side and you have zero on the right side. I don't really, no one really uses that form. Standard form, you can see because sometimes when you make equations like, uh, say you got a system of linear equations, like um, very common would be like, um, you can say like you're, you're uh, selling tickets for this school musical and like student tickets are like 10 bucks, adult tickets are 20 bucks. And you have, you have like a thousand people showing up. And you try to make an equation for X and Y and you Put the constant on the other side. Like a lot of times when you create equations with these kind of word problems, you put it in this form. So standard form is usually popular for that, for word problems. Um, so we tend to use for word problems, just so you know. Or the SAT. Um, anyone taking the SAT this Saturday? Yeah, you might see standard form. Yeah. Actually, speaking of which, this will really help you guys because they do a lot of uh, interpretation of slope on the SAT. So we might talk about that in a little bit. Uh, slope intercept form is this. This is good for graphing. Problem. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, point slope form is preferred for calculus. Um, I used to not like this form, but as, when I started teaching more calculus, I started realizing it's easier to do that because all you have to do is just put it into the format and you're done. You don't make any mistakes because then careless mistakes can happen when you try to isolate y. So point slope form is um, what is preferred for calculus. That's just that. You guys know what m is, right? Yeah, slope. slope. Good. Okay. Good. So make sure. Y minus y one. X one y one are the points you're given. M is a slope. Uh, vertical lines, obviously, X equals some number. And horizontal lines, Y equals some number, right? And again, remember M is slope. Yeah, x equals because all the because because you only know the x coordinates when you have a vertical line, right? Well, uh, we have a vertical line. Well, y equals b. Right. If I have something like this here, say this is at like two, that's at one. I don't know if the line goes, the line goes to be any. All I know is that x equals two. Remember, equation of relationships, right? That's what relationship might have. Whereas horizontal lines, I only know the y coordinate, right? Remember, m is m is slope. B is Y intercept. And X1, oh, Y1. Is a given point. Hmm? Yep. Okay. So again, just a lot of information here, but things you guys should know. Uh, the examples here should be pretty easy, and then the next page notes should be also pretty easy, and then we're done. All right. Can I erase this? We're good? Yeah. All right. Let's erase. All right. Let's just do these two really pretty quickly. It shouldn't take very long. I'll switch to black here. So you want to write the equation of a line passing through this point that's parallel and perpendicular. So first off, what's the slope here? 
three. So for part A, I'm just going to do this. Y minus five equals three X plus two. Done. Yeah, I'll specify like just to, to avoid the ambiguity and also the way you guys asked me if these are questions. <laughs> so I'll just say write the equation and plus the formula. And then for the next one, um, well, sorry, go JP. There's a one still in three x two. No, it doesn't matter because all the terms are still. There's no to it. It doesn't matter because we were passing through negative two five, right? Yeah. So which will have its own unique y intercept. I don't know what it is. I have to work it out, but I don't want to. So I'm, I'm not being asked to. Okay, what's the slope here for part B, guys? What's the slope here? Negative one over three. Good. Yep. Is it just one over one over three? Yeah, to change the sign. So if this were, like, say, uh, the, the original is negative three, that would be positive. So you have to switch the sign and flip this. Yeah, two things. And that's what, otherwise, you can do all the same. Yep, 100%. Because you, you pass through the same point. Um, again, point slope form is going to be preferred. So you want to write an equation that passes this point and then perpendicular. Now, first off, I have to get the slope here. How do I find the slope for that line? Um, uh, uh, slope intercept form. So switch. By switching the slope intercept form, I can easily extract the slope, right? Um, hold on, let me see. You're a step ahead of me. Oh, you said negative one third, Charlotte? Good. Good. Excellent. Good. So the slope. is negative one third. Now, let's actually write the equation. Y plus six. Where are you gonna say your slope is now if you're perpendicular? You can say three, X plus two. Done. Right, because you have to do the negative reciprocal. Because we're passing through this point here. That's a point. So, yeah, so the, the, um, that line intercept you found is doesn't matter. That's why I said you need to pass lines, but all I care about is relating the slopes. That's all I care about. Yeah, so the y sub has no bearing on the final answer. So, okay, cool. Um, well, let's keep on moving, guys. I know um, it's another section, but it's 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 tied closely tied to this. So. We should be able to go through this kind of quickly, and then you guys have some time to do a little bit of homework. All right, so 1.5. Um, let's read the instructions here. Write the equation line passing the point is parallel. Okay, we just did this one, didn't we? But yeah, just cross this off. We just did that. <laughs> that's lame. I don't know why it's being... Okay, that's like... I guess if you were to do this over two days, even better, right? Even better. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, average rate change. Here we go. Okay, now this is important because from a calculus standpoint, you'll see this a lot. Average rate of change, all that is, is just slope. That's it. That's all it is. It's just slope. Slope between two points. That's all it is. Um, but this tends to be used. For non linear equations. I'm not sure if you guys can read that. It's going to be used for nonlinear equations. Let me give you a great example. Give you a great example of average rate of change. And actually, I'll, um, I'll type it here. Let's go um, light blue.
Okay, I know I'm typing a lot. I'm going to explain just a second and just realize I probably didn't size um, size this correctly, but we'll kind of go with it. Okay. Not the best color palette. I apologize. Um, let's explain this. Okay. Good example of average rate change. Um, have you guys joined the South California report? Yeah. yeah. I did all the time. I, did, I went to UC San Diego for undergrad. I, I lived in Fremont. That's where I grew up. Took to Highway 5. Actually got a couple, got one ticket for sure. I think it's the only time I ever got a ticket. And I was going 100 miles an hour, but and I suppose that was 90. But anyway, so let's say you just trying to LA, not San Diego, right? So you're going to LA. So it's uh, roughly 400 miles. I say maybe you're going to like maybe southern, like maybe like Orange, uh, Orange County or uh, Newport Beach, is really nice, whatever, right? It takes you five hours, which is ridiculously fast. But anyway, um, your average speed is eight miles per hour, right? That's your average. So if you left your house at say seven in the morning. You got to LA at noon. That's on average eight miles per hour. But did you drive eight miles per hour the whole time? Uh, maybe a good chunk you did when you're on Highway Five, but you got to stop for gas. Maybe you can get in and out. Maybe you got to use a bathroom. Maybe you want to check out the scenery. I don't know. Maybe there's traffic. Maybe you saw a cop. You got to slow down. <laughs> or maybe you gun it because you just want to, or you're racing a friend. I don't know. Uh, but on average, you go eight miles per hour. To find the speed of particular moments, that's what calculus is all about. That's something called the derivative, which we learn in a few months when you take calculus. But um, that's just an average. That's what average means. And the distance you drive is not linear, right? Because your, your, your speeds keep changing, keep fluctuating. It's not going up the whole time, down the whole time. It goes up sometimes, it goes down sometimes. It stays flat. It's actually a piecewise function if you think about your distance with time, right? So... But average rate of change is you just want to find the average speed between two points, right? That's all you're doing. So let's take a look at these here. Here we have y equals x squared. So here's how it works. Um, I'll give you actually a more formal formula. Uh, you can think of it like this. F of B minus F of A. This is important, guys. You guys jot this down somewhere. But it's just slope. F of B minus F of A. That's an A, by the way. Sorry. So think of this as A. Think of this as B. Think of this as A. Think of this as B. Think of this as A. And what's our what's our function here? Yeah. And what's our function we're dealing with? X squared, right? So let's work it out. Um, so I'm going to do f of, zero, um, f of 0 minus f of negative 2 over 0 minus negative 2. What's f of 0 here, guys, when you look at the graph? What's the y coordinate 0? What's y coordinate negative 2? And what's the bottom going to be when you subtract, when you do zero minus negative two? Good. So you get negative four over two, which is what? Negative two. So that's your average rate of change for those two points. So here you're going to do f of two. I know it's a pain to kind of write it this way. But trust me, you'll think when you get to calculus, because you kind of have to do this quite a bit in calculus. So you want to get in the habit of writing it this way. Uh, but it's, it's just slope. That's all you're doing. Um, and I ran out of space. So <laughs> f of 2 is 4. f of 1 is 1. Down below is 1. 3 over 1 is 3. And then lastly, 
f of 1 minus f of 0, 1 minus 0, that's 1 minus 0 over 1, just get 1. Wait, how, do you, how did you get, oh, are you just doing x or y, y2 minus 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 y2 